Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel, my name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your Adventure Tower. Before we get started, make sure the model number of your Adventure Tower is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with the Adventure Tower, but if you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Your Adventure Tower comes in several boxes, but should all be on one big pallet. Let's take a look at what you should have received. There are steps within this assembly that require two people, so be sure to have at least two other adults available to help. Before we begin the assembly process, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need a half inch wrench, a 7 16 wrench, two 3 16 Allen keys, which are included, a Phillips head screwdriver, a Phillips head bit, a 3 8 drill bit, safety glasses, a ladder, a hammer, and a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. To make this easier, we're going to use a half inch socket, a 3 16 hex head socket, a socket adapter, a rubber mallet, and pliers. There are additional tools you will need to prepare a shock absorbing surface for your play system, so refer to your manual to see which additional tools you'll need. This video is meant to be used as a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct replacement, so for the best results, make sure to have the assembly manual on hand during the build. When building your play system, it's important that you choose a level area free from obstructions and at least 7 feet from buildings, trees, fences, or any other object. Also, to reduce the risk of injury, it's important that you prepare a shock absorbing surface to build your play system on, like wood chips or recycled rubber mulch. This video will focus on the assembly of the play system and not the shock absorbing surface, so it's important that you refer to your manual to review the safety instructions for this build. Alright, let's get started. Before we begin the assembly process, it's important that you make sure the ground is suitable for the anchors. So drive the anchoring rod at least 12 inches into the ground. If you can't, you may need to consider moving your playset to a different area. If you still can't after moving to a different area, call customer service. Connect these holes on two deck supports to this hole on a deck support tube, making sure that the hole is closer to the top. On the deck supports, make sure that these dimpled holes are facing down. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Repeat the previous step, making sure the hole on the short deck support tube is closer to the top and the dimpled holes on the deck supports are facing down. Arrange the deck support assemblies like this and then lay the long deck support tube in between them, making sure that these holes are closer to the top and then secure with the hardware. Now that this hardware has been added, go ahead and tighten all the hardware. Take the pole labeled GEA or the one with the warning label and add a foot cap to the end that's not tapered. Make sure that these holes in the foot cap line up with these holes in the end of the pole. When adding the hardware, make sure to add your washer, then the looped end of the anchor, and add it to the pole.
Now you can attach the pole to the deck support assembly, but before you do, make sure the dimpled holes are on the same side as the foot cap and that you're attaching it to the short deck support tube, not the long deck support tube. And when you attach it, you're going to attach it to these holes. The threaded bolt will go on the bottom hole and the shoulder bolt will go on the top hole. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Connect two pole braces to this hole in the pole, only finger tighten the hardware for now. Rotate the braces on the bottom up to this hole and secure with the hardware. Repeat for the brace that's on top. Now you can tighten this hardware from earlier. Using the same method as the other pole, attach foot caps and anchors to the bottom of these poles. Add the three poles and the braces to the deck support assembly using the same method as the first pole. Take the tower extensions labeled EMM and attach them to the poles labeled GBR. The end that goes on the pole is the end that has the hole further away from the edge. Add the tower extension labeled GEC to the pole labeled GEA. In addition to securing the tower extension, you'll also add hardware to the hole just below it. Add two handrails to this hole on the pole with the warning sticker and make sure they go on the inside. Continue adding handrails on the inside of each pole.
Take the pole caps and insert them into the ends of each tower extension. With the help of another person, lift the tower up onto its feet. Before continuing, review the previous section to make sure all the pieces are in the right spot and all the hardware is tightened. Using a 3 8 drill bit, draw out the 11 divots on each deck panel going from the top down. Place the deck panels up onto the deck, making sure the seam of the panels goes along the short deck support tubes. Make sure the panels go together properly by lifting each panel up at a 45 degree angle, then interlocking the tabs and laying it back down. With the help of another person, connect the panel to the deck through the center two holes. When facing the pole with the warning label, add a handrail support labeled DXO to the cutout just to the right of that pole. With the handrail support on the outside of the handrail, add the hardware. Secure the bottom of the handrail support, adding this bracket and the bracket labeled DZT to this location. Repeat the previous step on the left side of the pole with the warning sticker, adding the handrail support labeled DXO and the bracket labeled DZU. On the two remaining cutouts, use the same method to attach the handrail support labeled DXI, except this time you'll only use one bracket. Finish securing the panels to the deck by using the self-tapping screws to go through the remaining holes. The screws are designed to go through the metal underneath.
to the pole on the right of the pole with the warning label, secure the flat side of the long brace to this hole on the pole. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Lift the other end of the brace up to this bracket and secure with the hardware. And then secure the other end. Repeat the previous step, adding a long pole brace to the pole just to the left of the pole with the warning label. On the handle support, just to the right of the pole with a warning label, add the handle labeled B on the right side of the handle support. On the handrail support just to the right of the previous step, add a handle labeled B to the left side of the handrail support. On the handrail support just to the left of the pole of the warning label, add a handle labeled B on the left side of the handrail support. On the pole directly across the pole with the warning label, fill this hole with the hardware. On the pole to the right of the pole with the warning sticker, add two handles labeled A with the hardware. On the handrail support that doesn't have anything attached to it, add the guardrail labeled GQF oriented like this on the right side. On the pole to the right of the previous step, Add the guardrail labeled GQG to the left side and the last handle labeled A on the right side. Attach the two metal barriers to the pole with the warning sticker. Now attach the other end of the metal barriers to the handrail supports on each side. On the pole directly opposite the pole with the warning label, add the brackets oriented like this to these holes, making sure that the top brackets go through the top hole and the bottom brackets go through the bottom hole.
Take one of the plastic barriers and place it behind the brackets we just added, line up the hole in the bracket with the markings on the plastic barrier, and then drill it out with a 3 8 drill bit. Do the same with the other plastic barrier on the brackets on the other side. Line up the holes in the brackets with the holes you just drilled out and then secure with the hardware. Line up these markings with the holes in the handrail support and then drill them out with a 3 8 drill bit. Secure the barriers to the handrail supports through the holes you just drilled out. The roof panels ship flat, so you need to fold each roof panel like this. Overlap each roof panel so that the holes line up. Connect each roof panel together going through the lower two holes. This step will be much easier with the help of another person. Place the roof cap onto the roof, making sure the holes and design line up. With the help of another person, lift the roof up and secure the cap to the roof panels. The hardware will go through these four holes, not these holes. Arrange the roof supports in a raised X formation like this and then secure with the hardware. Flip the roof over and place the roof supports inside. Take the small roof supports and add a cap to each end.
Make sure the roof supports lay in these channels on the underside of the roof and that the holes line up. Place a small roof support over this hole and then secure it to the roof. Repeat this step for each small roof support. With the help of another person, finish securing the roof supports to the roof through these set of holes. With the help of at least two other people, lift the roof up onto the roof caps. Secure the roof supports to the roof caps like this. On the back of each rock wall panel, draw out these divots with a 3 8 drill bit. Add the handholds over the holes we just drilled out, making sure the small washer goes inside the handhold and the large washer goes in the back of the rock wall panel. Attach a window panel to the left side of a rock wall panel, but don't add hardware to the top hole. Connect the wall panel to the bracket just to the right of the pole with the warning label through the hole that we left open. Take a door panel and connect it to the left side of a window panel using the same method as the other panels.
Connect the wall panels to the bracket just to the right of the previous wall panels. Where the wall panels meet, make sure the right panel sits over the left panel and secure both of them to the pole. Connect a window panel to the left side of a door panel using the same method as the other panels. Connect these panels to the bracket just to the right of the previous wall panels. Connect the panels to the pole using the same method as before, making sure the right panel overlaps the left panel. Connect the rock wall panel to the left side of a window panel using the same method as before. Connect these panels to the last bracket. Before securing the panels to the poles, make sure that the right panel is always overlapping the left panel. Insert the caps into the ends of the climber legs, line up the holes, and secure with the hardware. Add the rugs to one of the climber legs, making sure to leave the hardware loose. Make sure the climber legs are oriented the same way, then flip the rungs onto the other climber leg and secure with the hardware. Flip the ladder over and tighten the hardware on the other side of the rungs. Locate the door to the left of the plastic barriers. There are two divots that you need to drill out from underneath. The two divots that you need to drill out are the two outer divots. Slide the climber in between the deck panel and the door panel, line up the holes and secure with the hardware.
Locate the door on the right of the plastic barrier because there's three holes that we need to drill out from underneath. The three holes you need to drill out are the three inner holes. The slide comes in two pieces and eventually will slide together. Locate these three divots at the top of the slide and drill them out with a 3 8 drill bit. Drill out the four holes at the bottom of the slide. Throw the four holes on the bottom half of the slide. Slide the lower part of the slide onto the upper part of the slide like this. Then secure the two together with the hardware. Place a slide over the three holes we drilled out earlier and secure with the hardware. On the pole with the warning label, locate this hole and add your steering wheel. Take the bolt and add your small washer, the clicker, the steering wheel, the large washer, and then attach it to the pole. Once the hardware is tight, Press the cap into the steering wheel so it's flush. Next, you need to anchor down your playset. Start by locating all four anchors, insert the forked end of the anchoring rod into the anchor, and place it close to the leg and drive it at least 12 inches into the ground. If there's any slack in the line, you'll have to pull it through the clamp but you may need to loosen the bolt at the bottom first. Once the slack is through, go ahead and tighten the nuts on the clamp. Once the lock is tight, go ahead and add two nuts to each side. To avoid property damage or serious injury, make sure you complete this step on all four anchors. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime adventure tower. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.